In today's video, we're going to be primarily focusing on the tropics as there is four potential tropical cyclones out there in the Atlantic that we need to talk about that the National Hurricane Center is focusing on. Now here we are taking a look at the current radar imagery. There is a bit of storminess to speak of. First off here for the north central United States down through a bit of the plains, we have a pocket of storminess. It's both both coming in the form of showers and thunderstorms here. We do have a few isolated and scattered showers happening here in the four corner states as well. And then we can see along the southeastern coast and the Gulf Coast of the United States, we also have some thunderstorms happening throughout this area. Now, it is a quieter day, but we will just zoom in and talk about all of it. We can see that there is plenty of storminess happening up here for Montana and North Dakota primarily, also impacting uh, Minnesota and South Dakota as well there. Looking like Fargo near this area is definitely some potent thunderstorms, so keep that in mind uh, down there on that end of the state. We also see that there is just these isolated showers here in portions of Utah and Colorado that are worth mentioning as well. We can see the southern extent of the plains here. We see plenty of storminess, uh, definitely some showers and some isolated and scattered thunderstorms happening throughout these areas. As we work our way a little bit further northward towards the north, uh, kind of like upper Midwest here, Iowa, Wisconsin, Illinois, Minnesota, and the upper peninsula of Michigan are all dealing with showers and thunderstorms uh, during this morning. Uh, and we already went over that area, so we'll just move on from there. For the Gulf states, we do see that there is some storminess moving onshore for some of these areas here. We can see out to sea there's plenty of storminess out here, uh, but a lot of this is starting to move onshore to states like Texas, uh, Louisiana, Mississippi here, uh, Alabama, and the Florida Panhandle, and even mainland Florida here being impacted uh, by some of these tropical thunderstorms there. Now for the southeast here, we see that there is a lot of this storminess taking place up and down the southeast coast. Uh, a lot of this is impacting the Florida coast, the Georgia coast, here the South Carolina coast, and even the North Carolina coast. So we're seeing a lot of coastlines feeling the impacts from that storminess. All right, now what we're going to do is we're going to move on. And we're going to take a look at the upcoming pattern as far as storminess total precipitation, and even diving into those tropics. Now here we are taking a look at the upcoming storminess here. We're just going to move on to the correct model run here. This is by the time we're reaching this afternoon, we can see that there will be some thunderstorms and showers possible. For the southeastern United States, we can also see for the north central United States, we're dealing with some of this storminess, just like we're dealing with right now, obviously. It's mostly what we're talking about anyway. By tomorrow afternoon, which will be Monday, August 29th, we could see plenty of storminess for the southeastern United States. We see a pretty strong low up above, a secondary low here, another secondary low there. So we're seeing some lower pressure here in general for the northeastern United States and southeastern Canada. This is what's allowing for these cold fronts to really work their way in there. By the time we're reaching Tuesday, which will be August 30th, we could see potent storminess stretching throughout a lot of the eastern United States and the south, central and southeastern United States. This is just stretching a cold front down like this, and this is leading towards cooler temperatures to be able to move in as well. And by Wednesday, August 31st, we could see that a lot of that storminess will have moved offshore except for southeastern Canada and northeastern United States. And down here in the south, central and southeastern United States, it's still uh, around. But for a lot of these pockets in between, we're seeing quieter conditions. Much cooler, however, uh, is, is going to be the trend. Now, Thursday, September 1st, same story. We see some storminess still here for the southeast, but really, really quiet out west. The north central United States and even the northeastern United States, very, very quiet uh, is kind of what we're going to be uh, dealing with. Now, by Friday, September 2nd, we do see another low working its way in here. Would not be surprised if we start to see precipitation developing in between somewhere in here. We'll just see if that actually does take place or not. Uh, I can see some minor storming is taking place from that but really nothing huge comes from that which is kind of a surprise usually when you have that low coming up above like that it does cause some storminess to stretch down but it just shows how quiet of a pattern we're really going to be in uh, it seems to really really want to quiet down here for uh, a lot of regions in between we see some storminess there in canada and also for the southeastern united states and we also see this tropical cyclone in the bahamas there uh, by september 4th which will be a sunday Here's Monday, which is September 5th. We see this is moving into the central Bahamas, kind of moving towards Florida. Seems to be what this model is showing here. Um, Tuesday, September 6th here, we see the southeast dealing with some storminess in here. Florida, kind of watching out for this tropical cyclone here. 
Um, we also have a pretty strong cyclone out here south of Baja there in Mexico, a 996 millibar low pressure center. We can see from that one all the way over to this one, we have a lot of storminess around for the southern regions of North America for the most part. Now, for the total precipitation through the next 10 days, no surprise, the southern regions are seeing the most here. In the whites, over the next 10 days, we expect practically no precipitation, which is most of the western United States, as you can see. The grays will be about a tenth of an inch or less of precipitation. Your greens will be a tenth of an inch to half an inch. Your blues will be half an inch to an inch. Your yellows will be an inch to two inches. Your reds will be two to five inches. And then your browns will be five to ten inches of precipitation. We see a lot of that there for Texas, Louisiana, Arkansas, and Mississippi. That's where the heaviest, heaviest of the precipitation is expected. Now, let's go ahead and take a look at the five-day graphical tropical weather outlook. Here we are taking a look at it, and like I said, four potential tropical cyclones we need to track. Here's this first one. We have a 0% chance of development over the next 48 hours. And over the next five days, we have a 20% chance of development here. So definitely worth noting, uh, this one we're going to need to watch for sure. This one up here in the northern portion of our tropical Atlantic here. Uh, we have a 10% chance of development over the next 48 hours, as well as a 10% chance over the next five days. Not necessarily a super high chance. This one in between, it's probably caught your attention already, has now been upgraded to a 30% chance over the next 48 hours and a whopping 70% chance over the next five days. We've seen a massive increase from yesterday where I think we had a 30% chance of development over the next five days. We've gone up by a lot. We've gone up by 40% now. Um, over the next over the past 24 hours, which is insane to think about. And our 48-hour outlook was about a 0% chance. So that one's gone up by about 30%. So the National Hurricane Center has really ramped up the percentages on that one. And now it's a code red, which is as high as it can get, really. Now, this one here in our main development region does have a 20% chance of development over the next five days and a 0% chance over the next 48 hours. So this is another one we're going to have to watch over the coming days as it develops, just like the one ahead of it that we started out with a low ch chance just like this and it eventually went up. That could happen with this one as well. So the tropics are getting very, very interesting. Uh, we're going to continue to track it daily, so be sure to tune in with us daily as we will watch these things very, very closely. Let's take a look at that intensity guidance for our code red storm here. Now, the intensity guidance, we have a lot of models holding us down, suppressing us over the next five to seven days, uh, which will be your 120 to 168 hour range. Uh, we have a lot of those just getting us narrowly to tropical storm status in between day five and day seven there. And then we have a group here. I'll actually just draw it out. So here's the group I just mentioned, the group that keeps us kind of low in here. That's kind of the weaker group that takes us to tropical storm status at about day seven. It's this group that's a little bit more concerning that upticks very quickly. So this group here that takes us straight to Category 1 status and Category 2 status. Again, Category 2 status there, Category 1 status there. These models clearly get us up above Category 1 within the next five days and into Category 2 with, before Day 7, so rapidly intensifying on some of these models. So there's clearly two groups here we need to watch, and eventually one will probably fold to the other and kind of start to move, whether that's up or down. That second group might move down and be a little bit more suppressed. That lower group might start to trend up and intensify quicker. Time will tell. Definitely something we're also going to need to track daily. Uh, we have a while to go, though. Now, let's go ahead and take a look at the spaghetti model guidance for this one. Now, here's kind of the all the different individual models. We can see that it's expected to go north of Puerto Rico, north of the Dominican Republic, and north of Haiti. Usually this is a worse sign that there will be a stronger storm. Usually when they go south of those islands, that's a little bit more uh, suppressed and usually going to have a lot harder of a time developing. These storms that go north of here, though, head into fa more favorable conditions and definitely pose a larger threat to the United States also. So multiple bad things to note here, unfortunately. This gets us to day seven about, which is going to be in here. Um, so that will be about a week from now. So next Sunday, that's where we would probably be. It's going to be just north of Dominican Republic. So we have a whole week uh, to go before it's even north of those islands. So still quite a while and a lot of time for things to change as well. Here's the Canadian ensemble model. The reason I show this one is because it's pretty interesting. Usually this one shows a lot of different options. Still though, we can see the mean average is something like this. Uh, it does like to come up northward here. Obviously there's two scenarios. It can either kind of come through Florida here. It can go even further south than that, but that's the main southern track we're seeing on the models. 
or it could really start to move northward uh, and hit the coast there, or it could kind of go out to sea here. I've seen all three on the models, and because it's so far out, all three are still very, very possible. So only time we'll be able to tell. That's the real reason we have to track this daily. Again, subscribe to tune in with us daily as we'll go over all of these things. Also, be sure to like the video if you did enjoy the video or if you did find the video useful. And also leave a comment down below with your thoughts. I'll see you guys in the next video. Thank you so much for watching.